Hey guys, welcome to Financial Health and Wealth, where we educate you in various ways to improve your life financially and live long, healthy lives. So today we're going to talk about the best credit cards for 2021. And if you'd like to see this type of content, then like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know about future videos. Now, if you haven't shopped for new rewards cards lately, the start of 2021 is a great time to do it. You can see what some of the top cards are offering and put together a strategy to earn as much back as possible next year. Now, of course, not everyone needs the same things in a rewards card. There are consumers who want a one card wallet, meaning one rewards card for all their spending. Others are open to multiple credit cards. Some want to earn cash back and others want points they can use for travel. Each rewards card on this list comes with a recommendation on what it's best for. That way, you can find the cards that fit your needs. So first up is Discover It Cash Back. Now this one is best as a one card wallet with no annual fee, and it's the simplest and most affordable option, and it's tough to beat. Uh, there's no annual fee or foreign transaction fees. It earns 5% back on up to 1,500 in combined purchases across rotating bonus categories you activate every quarter. And all of the purchases get 1%. And what makes this card even better is Discover's cash back match. After your first year using the card, Discover doubles all the cash back you earned. That's why the Discover It cash back is perfect uh, for one card wallet card. And the more you spend during the first year, the more bonus rewards you earn. Now, frankly, I do have this card personally, and uh, I very much enjoyed the first year rewards match. It's great for the categories. Uh, currently, I am racking up on points because I'm buying everything possible from Amazon. Fun fact, I've purchased a few items for free by using my actual rewards cash back to purchase that item. There's a, uh, a link that pops up when you're in Amazon on the checkout that asks you if you want to go ahead and, uh, and do that. I think that's phenomenal and it really helps me out each year knowing that I have to buy a lot of presents and I can go ahead and make plans, put the money aside, and then pay everything on the Discover card and then just pay the card off once I'm done shopping. <laughs> it's a great bonus, guys. Up next is the Capital One Venture Rewards credit card. This one's best as a one card wallet for travel rewards. And if you're looking for a single travel card for all your spending, this one is a smart choice. For a $95 annual fee, it earns a flat rate of two miles per $1 on every purchase. And you can redeem venture miles at a rate of one cent per mile towards travel spending. And Capital One also has travel partners where you can transfer those miles. And the card is another card that rewards you for spending more over the first year. Right now, you can earn up to 100,000 miles. You earn 50,000 miles for spending $3,000 in purchases in the first three months with this limited time offer, plus 50,000 more for spending $20,000 on purchases in the first 12 months. Now, I'm about you but I'm pretty sure an average family these days is going to be spending that much money just between household things, groceries, and everyday items. So check it out. So up next is the Blue Cash Preferred card from American Express. This one's best for cash back rewards on groceries. You'll get the highest cash back rate on grocery spending with this card. It offers an industry leading 6% back on up to $6,000 per year in U.S. supermarket purchases. That's in addition to 6% back on select streaming services, 3% at gas stations, and on transit expenses. And then there's 1% on everything else. American Express charges a $95 annual fee for this card, which is worth paying for if you can take advantage of its higher rewards rate. Now, also, I do have uh, a blue American Express card as well, and I do agree, it's very good card regarding for your everyday purchases regarding supermarkets. Considering I just spent about $60 buying some things uh, yesterday at the grocery store, it does add up, it is possible. Uh, so as I said before with uh, the Capital One card, if you do have a family, or even if it's just a few of you that you might be purchasing for, Add it up. Look at those grocery bills. If this is something that you feel that you could do in a year, along with that gas and travel and, and even streaming services, then this is a great card for you. So American Express will periodically check your credit history, look at your payments and usage, and make sure you're doing well. They may just surprise you with an increase to your credit limit. Also, I found that you're able to pick up additional cards with them without a hard credit pool once you're established. This can take 6 to 12 months. 
They decide based upon their internal data in this case. It's actually what I did. I originally had a gold card and I applied a year later and got my blue card. I did not have any additional hits on my credit and I improved my profile. Now this was the procedure when I applied, but American Express can and does change their policies at any given time period. So that's what I did and it worked out really well because I got all of the benefits of a rewards card, a cash back card, a travel card, and I even moved my limits between cards if needed. And uh, you just have to figure out how you want to work it out and spend it. All right. So now we have the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. This one's best for getting started with Chase Ultimate Rewards points. And uh, the Chase Ultimate Rewards points are some of the most useful travel points on the market. That's why Chase won the best credit card rewards program category in the Ascent's 2020 Credit Card Awards. And if you're interested in high value travel redemptions, it helps to have a card that earns Chase points. The Chase Sapphire Preferred card is the ultimate rewards starter card. It has a sign up bonus of 60,000 points for spending 4,000 in three months. Those 60,000 points are worth at least $750 in travel. And this card is also affordable as it only has a $95 annual fee. Another nice thing about Chase credit cards is that they work well together. If you have multiple Chase rewards cards, you can combine your points. So you could earn more by getting this card as well as the next one on the list. And that is the Chase Freedom Flex. This one's best for bonus rewards in multiple spending categories. The Chase Freedom Flex offers a long list of bonuses, especially for a no annual fee card. These bonuses include a $200 sign-up bonus when you spend $500 on purchases in three months, 5% back on up to $1,500 combined quarterly purchases in bonus categories that you activate, 5% back on up to $12,000 spend at grocery stores in the first year, purchases at Target and Walmart aren't eligible. Unfortunately, those aren't really considered grocery stores because they sell other items. I know. 5% back on travel booked through Chase Ultimate Rewards, 5% back on Lyft rides through March of 2022, 3% back at restaurants, which also covers takeout and orders through eligible delivery services, which makes me happy. Also, 3% back at drugstores. I have a Chase Freedom card, and that one is also a very good card to use for exactly the same reasons that I just stated. I really enjoy the cash back function with different categories each quarter. And you can use your cash back to purchase gift cards, make a payment, or just send it to the bank if you want to. It's up to you. It's flexible. But I do think that combining it with an additional Chase card is a good strategy. Let's say you have the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. You could add the Chase Freedom Flex and use it for purchases in its bonus categories. Then you can transfer those points to your Chase Sapphire Preferred card and use them for travel redemptions. Just be mindful that with Chase, they do monitor what other cards you have acquired within a period of time. So if you're going to go after getting a trifecta or having multiple Chase cards to kind of game the system, then go ahead and get the Chases first or within the first five cards. Because after that, you may not be able to get a new Chase card for a period of time. The bottom line is that any of these cards would make a fantastic addition to your wallet. However, getting two or more of these and splitting up their uses maximizes your potential cash back and rewards. This is how I utilize my cards. Also, using your credit cards in a responsible way can help uh, maintain good credit by um, keeping your utilization ratio fairly low. Comment below if you'd like to hear more about building a great credit score. So, thanks for watching. And as always, hit the like and subscribe buttons and keep getting tasty content and go ahead and uh, tap that notification bell while you're at it. So enjoy the rest of your day.